You can't cut Ruth out of a plan that she came up, created, and gave to the highest, but you don't know that she did that. See, she's a bad bitch, but you don't know how bad she was. Okay? All right. So, I mean, you might try to cut her out, but it's it's Ruth. She's going to outsmart you, just, just so you know. I'll I put my money on Ruth. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's me again. Um, We are back for Ruthless, season three, episode three. I should jump right into it. So Lacey realizes that at the end of episode two, as she has executed these people, she didn't shot these people to to glory. Um, and so the realization that you didn't kill these people is settling in in your spirit, and she's just freaking out. Um, and so now they're in a mad dash to figure out like what's the next move, what's the next move. Um, let's find the keys to this trunk and let's get out of here. The other girl finds the keys on the old man in his pocket, and you know, and she's still fumbling around to get up out of there. He shoots her in the arm. Shoots her in the arm, shoulder, somewhere up in that region, and um finishes his his death. He I guess that, you know, that was, that was his dying action. He shot her and then finishes dying on the float. Um, so now they got to get up out of there, but not only do they have to get up out of there, she is now injured. There are soldiers outside holding the FBI agent hostage and Dacon is on the way. So there's a lot happening outside of this, this farmhouse and they still, they still got to get up out of there. They don't know. Nobody knows that they're in there, but there's a lot going on currently. So, um, a, sol a soldier walks up on Brian um, the girls, are, the girls are inside trying to change their clothes, I guess trying to change their appearance, you know, I guess that makes sense, nobody wants to be looking for the shy girl, the girl that has a hole in her shoulder or whatever, so, um, they're changing, trying to figure out their escape route, um, a couple of soldiers has walked up on Brian, and wondering why he's out there, they know why he's out there already, but they're asking him, um, they hear noise outside and they figure that something is going on. So the girls have postured themselves, you know, one's facing this door and one facing the other door. Anything that moves is getting blasted. Good plan. I mean, I'm killed the old people for no reason. So, um, sure. Why not shoot everything that moves? So, um, they called Dacon and, um, told him about Brian being found and he's on the way. All right, so Ruth. Ruth defends Elder Mother even though they hate each other. She's talking to um, the highest and lets her know like she did She did what she was supposed to do. She had the kids lined up and ready. She had the food. She had the Kool-Aid and the food prepped. Um, just like you instructed her to, even though she didn't. I don't know, know what that's going to help her gain, but I guess just to keep anything to keep him calm. She'll tell him anything to keep him calm in this current moment. Um, so Ruth is also cunning Black River and she's working on a plan and she tells him, you know, while we love Elder Mother in her position, she's, she's aging, she's aging out of, you know, kitchen committee. She needs to find something else to do. And in her place, we could put somebody like River or somebody like Zane, you know, basically she's recommended some of her other co-conspirators to be in such powerful, in a powerful position. Um, in my opinion, that way, if something goes down, you're on my team, you know, we'll run things how we want to in the event that this motherfucker loses it again and we got to drink this damn Kool-Aid, you know, just, you know, I probably just set up her network of people that's going to help her when shit start hitting the fan again. All right. So, um, Brian is trying to buy some time and he's avoiding the questions and the soldier calls him out. He's like, you're an FBI agent. We found your car and your badge was stuffed in your tire, which Ricky move. Um, according to them, child, I, I, I'd put it somewhere where you wouldn't look, maybe not in the glove box, but somewhere. Um, so the soldiers call him out as FBI. Um, they found his car way before they found him. And, um, they want to know who the inside man is. The, the doggone, Brian's so doggone dumb and crazy. He got a notepad with just minute by minute notes about what is going on said that there's an inside man inside the cult and they want to know who that person is. He ain't giving out no names, so they, they beating the shit out of him until that guy gets there. All right. So Ruth, Ruth tells Zane that she's preparing her for a new position and she needs to go pre prepare the altar, the chair for, for the highest since he's had a download. He's had a premonition, a vision, whatever it is, and he needs to relate to the people. So that's her job. While it used to be Elder Mother's job, she's going to try to Put that, put Zane in that position. Um, don't tell other mother. Just go do what I told you to do, and I'll do her. All right. So she is shaking up the camp in that aspect. 
Oliver. Oliver is calling out for Andrew because it is nighttime now and he is probably weary in his body from sitting up in that tree. It appears that he's climbed down and he's looking for Andrew. Like, okay, Andrew, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, let's just talk about this. Andrew, you know, snuck up behind him somehow and he's like, we're going back to the camp. I don't know you. We ain't friends. I ain't your homie. I don't want to kick it with you. None of that. So Andre, Andre, Andrew, I hope I haven't said Andrew this whole time. Anyway, Andrew, Andrew says he's taking him back to the camp and all Oliver wants is one last favor for him to take him by the farmhouse first to see, you know, how the girls fared. Did they make it? Like what came of it? And it looks as if Andrew may be granting him that favor, but it's to, it's to be seen. We'll see because Andrew is a little nuts himself. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Ruth. Ruth is talking to River and Joan. Um, and lets Joan know that the highest needs needs to see her. And she, Joan, again, frazzled, a wreck. Like, is he calm? Is he calm? Like, please tell me he's calm. Like, what do I need to do? Is it a problem? Like, girl, just go see him. Ruth has been rooting for y'all this whole time. Like, she ain't led you astray. She ain't led you to no punishment. Go see. She's obviously pre-worked it out. She done calmed him down. You ain't have to hang yourself. Like, all of that has been worked out. Ruth helped you. So just, just, just trust her. She got it. She got this. So, she leaves and um her her and River are talking and they're worried about her. They are worried about her. They know that she is a liability. She she is not stable and she got a lot going on. So um, you know, Ruth also knows that River is much like herself running multiple escape plans, um, and tells him, like, all right, Joan is cool and all, and you know, we all in, in this particular plan together, but whatever little side plans you planning, don't fuck me over. Or I'm gonna kill you my damn self. Like I know I, there are people after their own hearts, River and um Ruth, and she just reminds him, like, do what you will with Joan, just don't play with me. That <laughs> that was the message that I got. So Elder Mother sees another elder mother and at the end of episode two, one of the original elder mothers that was always with Marva, she passed away in real life. So that, that sucks. So they replaced her with, um, I don't know the lady's name, but she's familiar. You gotta go look it up. I ain't, I don't know well enough to tell you. So <laughs> elder mother sees another elder mother and some troops and they are removing Melinda's body from wherever she was. And they're walking her through the, the camp to wherever her final resting place is going to be or whatever they're going to do with the body. And elder mother wants to tell the highest immediately, but the other elder mother has some sense. See, Marva is trying to win favor with the highest, not thinking about the grand scheme of things. If you take any more bad news to the highest at this particular point, you're probably going to get your head chopped off with a sword just for being the messenger. So just chill. So the other elder mother tells elder mother Marva, like, nah, it's not a good time to block hot. Let's just chill. I got it. Just, just relax. And so, um... We'll see if she pays attention. She don't want to give them no more bad news. And so um, she she scurries right along and realizes that Zane is preparing the highest's altar. And she's like, no, that's that's my job. And y'all don't have no business doing that. You go away. You go get Ruth to tell her to come back here because she don't got no business telling you to do my job. So you go away and, and, and tell her. And so, so now Zane is caught between these two women, these two pissing matches, and she's just like, all right, I'll go get Ruth. Whatever y'all want me to do, child, I don't care. All right. River wants to go shower, which suspicious because why the world is imploding currently. And you want to go take a bath? And and we also know like y'all on a on a y'all at this camp coat whatever and it's probably no hot water so it's gonna be a cold shower and ruth tells him like you don't need to do that your toes are almost frostbitten so taking a cold shower ain't the wisest thing to do duh um and so he he wants but what he's thinking about is now that he didn't die um uh, because that kind of put him in the freezer the high i don't think the high said anything to do with it i can't remember I don't think he did. So he wants to be ready in case he's called to the highest. Much like William, when William died, like William wouldn't eat because he didn't want to have um, a lot of food on his stomach when the highest would call to him um, for him to have his way. And so River has that same traumatic response. Like, I need to be clean. I need to be washed. I need to be empty. But if he calls me, I need to be ready. I ain't trying to get no extra punishment. I ain't trying to get whoop no extra time i need to be ready basically he's he's that in his mindset but his speech is still reserved because it's river river you know got a little sociopath in him too so 
Um, he tells him, uh, tells her about the highest, oh, Ruth tells him about the highest almost killing Daikon and her saving his life. And, um, now, now that, and River reminds her like, yeah, while you did him a favor, the highest is now your only ally. He's the only thing that, that's going to protect you and save you because Dion, now, Daikon, though you saved his life, he wants you dead because he feel played. Um, he must have felt some kind of way. He must have had a little feeling in there because his heart a little broke that you and the highest was getting down. So you might want to work that out before you worry about what me and John got going on. So, yeah. And what we, you know, we come to the conclusion that we're not only going to have to kill Daikon, we're going to have to kill the, the highest Daikon. Everybody got to die because it ain't no way to get out of this scot free. Reasonable deduction, I suppose. Reasonable deduction. So, Dawn has finally made her way to the highest, and she is just, again, frazzled, scared as hell. But before she went, Ruth gave her, like, some sort of sedative to kind of calm her nerves because she was a nervous wreck. Um, And so, you know, by the time she get there, she's a little more calm. Her nerves are a little more easygoing. It's okay. Crisis averted. Um, And so the highest gives her the plan that Ruth gave him as if he came up with the plan. And now Joan has to go back and fabricate this plan in the, in the records. Cause she's the accountant in the group. And so, you know, he tells her, you know, you go fabricate this, it, make it, you know, make it look good on paper. That way, when I give this information to the cartel, the cops, whoever asks, it looks good on paper. It, it, it matches up on paper. So she, she's like, okay, cool. I can do that. Ain't no thing. Ain't no thing at all. So Ruth, um, has gotten elder mother scared. She's just issuing out threats at this point because she pretty much number she the number two man on the highest pole, the totem pole, and she's just gonna do whatever she wanna do. She's still her elder mother and she got shit to do. Um and um Ruth tells her, like, you know, your position may be no longer existing or you may be getting replaced. And elder mother's afraid, like, okay, he's just gonna throw me out. I've been loyal all these years, I've been his right hand for all this time, and he's just gonna throw me out. It's not going down like that. If he try to toss me out out the group, I'm just gonna kill everything moving. And I'm thinking like, all right, that makes sense because you work in the kitchen, so you could definitely poison everybody. But now that you've issued this threat verbally, elder mother, ain't nobody gonna eat your food. Nobody eating them uh, them pates and oxtails and whatever else you be cooking, girl. So other than that, how you gonna kill everybody? You don't have the physical capability. But okay, girl, whatever whatever helps you sleep at night um Ruth tells her you know just wait on the prophecy and see what happens just go lay down just go take a nap it's all right so Joan is absolutely relieved she is relieved that the highest was nice to her and you know it doesn't appear that he's gonna make the drink to poison anytime soon and um and what she also realizes is that their plan has been fast tracked and by fast track, I mean where they were trying to figure out how to get some of this money out of the accounts. The highest just handed her the plan, like you know, start bringing the money in a little bit at a time, so we could further fabric fabricate fabricate the Lilo story, so you know, so we can get that squared away. So what's going to happen is her, she's as the accountant, she's going to have three million in hand on the compound, like on the premises. So that's easy. They don't have to steal it. They don't have to put it in those shell accounts that they created because the money, the cash will be on hand if this works out great. So, um, they have, they have a couple weeks. He wants that done over the next couple weeks, um, placing the money right in their laps. Um, but they also, River also tells her, don't tell Ruth about this plan. River, again, River always working two sides. He, he's already telling Ruth that John can't be trusted. They got a plan. And then him and John got the plan on the side. And I think he may have some plans with some other people. And ultimately it's, you know, it's all for the cash when it comes to River, um, the thing is, you can't cut Ruth out of a plan that she came up, created, and gave to the highest, but you don't know that she did that. See, she's a bad bitch, but you don't know how bad she was. Okay? All right. So, I mean, you might try to cut her out, but it's it's Ruth. She's going to outsmart you, just just so you know. I, I'll, I'll put my money on Ruth. So, River is um starting up confusion, saying, you know, Oh, I can cause dissension. I put Ruth and the heist together. I can place little nuggets um, about finances in his ear and, you know, make him turn against Ruth. That way we can get off scot free with this money. Um, and so it's, it's just a mess because you, you are causing a lot of problems and somebody's going to figure it out and you're going to end up back in the freezer or you're going to end up 
with a similar fate to Lilo because you're doing a lot. All you have to do is just, just chill. All you have to do is wait. Ruth has proven herself more times than you have in the situation. So let's just relax. You don't know how to relax. That's your problem. All right. So the other girl that was at the farmhouse with Lacey. I don't know this lady's name, and by the looks of her condition, she ain't going to be a factor much longer because she's about to die. She is fading fast. She is losing blood. She's, she need to get to the ER ASAP. And they realize, like, it's been a long time. The sheriff probably ain't coming. He ain't coming. So we just need to figure out how to get out of here. Do we need Do we need to make a dash for the truck? How we, The best way to get out of here and, and get the hell away from these dead people. So they're going to have to make a run for it at some point. Um, then the four-wheelers show up and they just feel like, damn, somebody else is here? And it's Daikon. Daikon shows up and um, the soldiers bring the bring the deputy slash FBI agent to Daikon and, you know, tell them what they found. And Daikon is like, oh, oh, really? Oh, really? And then um, the deputy's trying to flex his little power like, oh, I called the sheriff and he's on the way. All y'all going to jail. Put your guns down. Whoop de whoop, blah, blah, blah. And, um... That kind of is like, all right, cool. At that moment, the sheriff pulls up, and so deputy got his chest all puffed out, like, yeah, backup is here. Motherfucker, all y'all going to jail. Put your guns down. Um, sheriff, go ahead and read them their rights so they can get them up out of here. And the sheriff draws down on, on that kind of like, yeah, what y'all doing out here with my deputy, blah, 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 blah. As the conversation goes on, though, the sheriff turns the gun on Brian. Didn't shoot him just yet, but turns the gun on Brian, and Brian is looking like, I'll be goddamn. I know you fucking lying to me. So, yeah, the sheriff done, done showed his hand. So, I'm sure Mr. Brian is going to have to die, disappear, or something to that effect. And while all of that was going on, y'all still sitting on this floor, Lacey and the girl, I would have peeked out the window. Like, it, shit, they're dead now. Ain't nothing I can do inside the house. I would have peeked out the window, surveyed the back door, and see if anybody was back there. If ain't nobody back there, I'm out. If I see somebody up there, I'm going to just go in the attic and chill. Like, I'm going to find me a hiding spot until the coast is clear. Because there's so much going on outside, I feel like they may forget to even go outside and see if y'all made it. Because y'all got to realize, Daikon is out there. Soldiers are out there. The FBI deputy dude is out there. Um, What's his face? The sheriff is out there. Andrew and Oliver are on the way by there to make sure the girls have got this. You got a whole lot of dynamics going on at one time. And y'all just sitting here like ducks, just waiting on... The, the truck to magically come pick y'all up. No. Make an escape. I'd have been crawling out there in my arms and knees out the back door. Because, baby, y'all got a pre-existing situation going on in the front yard. So, I'm going to go ahead and get out the back. But, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do um, next week. So, that has been Ruthless. Season 3, Episode 3. Um, Like, comment, share, subscribe. Whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.